let's begin by your telling us a bit about your professional experience, uh, your district, and the board you're currently working with. David, do you want to kick off? Sure. Uh, I'm David Pennington, and I'm superintendent of the Ponca City Public Schools in Ponca City, Oklahoma. We're a district of 5,200 students uh, in north central Oklahoma. Uh, this is my second superintendency. It's my 12th year as superintendent in Ponca City. Before that, I served as nine years as superintendent of the Blackwell Public Schools in Oklahoma, a district of about 1,800 students. Uh, in Oklahoma, our boards are five-member boards. Uh, they, we elect a board member every year, and they serve five-year terms. And now, uh, Khalid, how about you? Yes, uh, well, I'm the superintendent of Reading School District uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania, which is about 40 miles northwest of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, we have 18,000 students, and um, what's unique about uh, Reading School District is that uh, we have 28 different countries represented with 26 different languages spoken. Uh, we're 80 percent Latino, which is very unique uh, for this area of the United States. Um, our demographics are very similar to, dem uh, to demographics down in school districts in Florida. Um, my school board consists of nine members, and um, my members are elected, and they serve various terms from uh, three year, uh, a rotation of three year and two year terms, um, especially when they're school board members who are, who do not finish a, uh, a finish a term. They'll have a special vote to bring on a member, and then it really keeps the, it really keeps the, um, I guess, the regularity of the school board members. I mean, it's a very fluid group. Um, I've been a superintendent now. This is my fifth year as a superintendent. My previous experience, uh, I was in Caroline County, Maryland, uh, where I served uh, as a superintendent of schools for three years. And before that, I was a director of secondary education, a building principal, vice principal, dean of students. Uh, and a teacher. So um, that, that completes uh, the demographics. Well, thank you, uh, gentlemen. Uh, you know, I think there's pretty wide agreement that one of the critical keys to a really rock-solid board superintendent partnership is agreement between the board, the school board, and the superintendent on your, what I call, uh, CEO specific leadership targets, the mm -hmm. impact you want to have as an individual CEO on your district, uh, separate from your district-wide uh, goals and objectives and targets and so on. Uh, would you take a few minutes and describe your current targets and how you uh, reached agreement on them with your school board. And Khalid, do you want to kick off on this? Yes, uh, uh, the the targets for uh, uh, for my performance as a superintendent, it really began in the interview process um, in regards to um, speaking with the board and, and, and assessing what their expectations was for a superintendent. Um, Clearly, in the 100-day plan, 100-day uh, plan uh, activity or planning activity that I conducted, um, I began to to capture uh, five goals that were district goals, and how would I fit in as a superintendent and being assessed. The next level there was after the 100-day plan, um, there was a report uh, that I gave feedback to the school board, and then we engaged in a retreat and began to put some quantifiable uh, data points. Uh, on to um, the superintendent's expectations. Um, I th and then also in Pennsylvania, uh, there is a guiding document or guiding uh, or guidelines from the state which um, per se give you, uh, give school districts and superintendents and school boards uh, parameters to work within. So um, even though they're, they're, they're quite broad, the the um, school board's uh, retreat is the opportunity to really fine tune fine tune the goals for the superintendent. Um, very quickly, as I go over the areas, um, and I'll keep it very broad. Uh, for example, uh, in my evaluation, um, the board uh, the board assesses me on student growth and achievement, uh, organizational leadership, uh, district operations and financial management communication uh, and community relations, um, human resource management, professionalism, 
And then we have to look at the formative assessments uh, in regards to strengths and improvements. And in any good evaluation or solid evaluation, there's always room or resources for areas to identify improvements. David? Well, um, my experience is a little bit different. Um, I think it's kind of fits into that uh, length of time that we've been in our jobs. Uh, I think mm -hmm. that what uh, Khalid talked about were, um, you know, you establish your goals when you interview for the job. I think that's, as I talk to superintendents who have been maybe the last five or six years have interviewed for jobs and been given positions, that seems to be pretty common. Um, mm -hmm. My evaluation is one that, uh, since I've been here 12 years, like I, like I mentioned earlier, and so my evaluation has changed a couple of times over the years, and it generally happens when you have in my experience, it's been when you end up with maybe a board that's different than the board that hired you. And, uh, and, and I'm kind of in that position now. Uh, we've had a, a turnover of that board, and so um, my evaluation is different than it, than it was when I first started. But there are some similarities uh, in that in, in my most recent, um, as we worked through a new evaluation process, what, the, what we did is we identified areas of responsibility for the superintendent. And so areas such as management and leadership, operations, uh, human resources, curriculum and instruction, board relations, community relations. And then an area that's very big for us in Oklahoma because of our financial uncertainty is budget and finance. Mm -hmm. and, so, uh, and so within those areas then there are, um, you know, specific targets um, Superintendent Board Communication. You mean targets communication. for you, David, right? Excuse me? You mean targets for you, right? Targets for me, right. Okay. About my communication with the board or how I communicate with the community and those kinds of things. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so that's how we do it here. And, um, you know, uh, for us it's, it's worked. Um, and it's, and, you know, um, a, uh, I think everybody's evaluation, I think every superintendent's evaluation is a little bit different. And that's mm -hmm. at least been my experience. Well, speaking of evaluation, let's talk a little more about the processes you to follow in your districts for the board to evaluate your performance. Uh, share a couple of the nuts and bolts uh, aspects of the evaluation process. What kinds of meetings you have, that kind of thing. With okay. the board. David, you want to kick off on this? Sure. In my district, uh, in Oklahoma, uh, even though we have multiple year contracts, uh, superintendents are still evaluated every year, and that's required by state law. And so uh, our, my evaluation is always done um, in January, and so uh, our board then uh, receives the evaluation instrument in November. Uh, they complete it in a December board meeting. Uh, during executive session when I'm not present, they go through and they combine their five evaluations into one evaluation. And then that evaluation is either presented to me in the January meeting during the executive session. I've had some board presidents who come in before the January meeting and sit down and go through the evaluation. Mm -hmm. And then um, and then typically then, um, at that time, uh, they'll go ahead and then come out of that January meeting and uh, vote to extend my contract for another year. Mm. And that then, process worked pretty well for you. Yeah, I mean, it's it's always it's I've always uh, what I like about it uh, when I first started when I first became a superintendent um, back 20 years ago, it was pretty common across the state for everything to happen in that January board meeting. They would bring their evaluation instruments, they get together and try to come up with one, and it just made that January meeting so long. And so by doing it this way, it, 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 it gives them time to have the discussion, but it also means that, that you're not in there in executive, they're not in executive session for two or three hours on a January night, and because the impression is, is when they're in there that long on the day they're going to vote on your contract, that something's not right. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, so this is, in my opinion, this has made it, at least for us, has made it all go a lot smoother. Good. Kyle, and how about your district? How do yes, you handle um, evaluation? 
Yes, very, very similar to David in regards to um, in Pennsylvania, uh, we have the opportunity to sign multi-year contracts uh, from three to five years. Uh, however, we're evaluated uh, every every school year, um, and our guidelines of Pennsylvania, it's um, we're, we're evaluated before each fiscal year. So um, that means we have a June 30th deadline. Um, what happens is that. Um, we have the board, um, we, we bring in, we, the board does another mini retreat so we can accomplish this in all, uh, so they can accomplish this task in one day. Um, generally, we'll bring in a consultant which would lead the discussion around uh, my evaluation, um, uh, it would, 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 um, would, would communicate around um, what measures have I met my, have I met my goals, and they will engage in, a, in, in again, a, a mini retreat without me around. What happens then, the consultant will, um, will, will combine the qualitative and quantitative data, uh, put it on charts, make sure everyone has input in the process, and create one written document for me. Um, then a meeting is called where I'm called into an executive session. Uh, the the uh, document is reviewed with me, uh, and I have the opportunity to respond uh, respond to that document um, either there or they'll give me one week uh, to give a rebuttal. Once the June 30th date hits here in Pennsylvania, um, my evaluation becomes public record. It goes out on the goes out on our website. There's a link that goes out informing everyone that the superintendent's evaluation has been posted, and then we move on to the next year. Uh, and, and, and that's a pretty, uh, here in Pennsylvania, one of the issues um, that was discussed with one of our prior governors was the lack of transparency in superintendent's mm -hmm. evaluations. So this makes the, the process, even though the public doesn't have input, per se, into the actual uh, final calculations into the document, et cetera, but they do have the opportunity to review it and comment on it uh, online as necessary. Uh, so it's a very, very wide open process, very transparent, uh, and again, bringing in a third party to organize the school board, all nine members, to create one document with fidelity uh, is the key. Um, I agree with David, um, the, the, the old days of doing them in executive sessions could really become problematic because uh, you're always up against the clock, and it's hard to assemble and organize the thoughts of various board members in within two to three hours. It could really, really get out of control, which could signal trouble um, or even the perception of trouble uh, for, for, for the district leader. So um, having a process where they're in a retreat, they're in a team mode, they're working on a project, they have one day to complete it, a week to get it over to the superintendent, and then a week to wait for a rebuttal and response, and then a week to get it onto the uh, online for public review. Uh, and all if necessary. this public, ultimately, right? Yes. Has yes. that caused any problems? Absolutely not. Uh, I, I believe that, again. Superintendent positions are very, um, very, very uh, unique in a sense that. Um, if you have not been a superintendent, you really don't have a clue of all of the responsibilities a superintendent uh, has to um, embark upon. Um, that's why I, I think there is a lot of – that's why when you have a superintendent that functions as a CEO, uh, as we see as we had non-traditional candidates, people understand the language of a CEO. They say, oh, this is the leader of this company that has – 2,000 employees and 18,000 kids, and they see it differently. But from a superintendent standpoint, people think of superintendents at time to be uh, as being extensions to the school principal, and the job is much more, uh, much more magnificent than that, or extraordinary than that. So the evaluation online is somewhat enlightening to the public because they get to see all of the things that the superintendent is 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 is, is taking on. And also, it gives a lot of credibility to the school board where they know an evaluation hasn't been done in the dark. Um, so we've been getting nothing but positive um, responses from how we've been presenting this at the, uh, for, for, for the public, for the stakeholders uh, in, in, our, in our school district. So you've got a very transparent process, and in a sense, uh, it's an educational process for the public, right? 
is yes. they understand better your role as chief executive of your district. Yes. And it is the performance. Hmm? Do you do this, David? Is your evaluation posted? No, it's not. Um, but that doesn't mean, you know, I mean, just as I listen to this conversation, I'm thinking, well, okay, maybe we might want to think about doing that. But we don't have anything in state law that would require that to happen. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's interesting, um, uh, Khalid, I, th I think you mentioned that people commonly think the superintendent's role is kind of an extension of the, the principal's role, but actually it's being CEO of a district is like going into a totally new kind mm -hmm. of uh, field we call CEO-ship, right? Yes. I mean, it's like yes. nothing you've experienced going up the ranks. Yes. Yeah, yes. So uh, yes, I'm sorry. Yes, and and I agree. Uh, I agree. Um, uh, I I believe that you have a lot more control, uh, a lot more control. The the closer you are to the students, for example, a teacher has ultimate control over the twenty to thirty lives that he or she impacts on a daily basis um, at each class period approximately 150 to 200 kids per day. But then as you start to move up to the assistant principal, the assistant principal is now dealing with more of the, um, more of the student issues pieces, dealing more of the, with the parent pieces, the parenting pieces. You move up to the principal, the principal is now taking on the PTO and some of the community pieces and being that liaison into central office. But when you get to central office as a superintendent, there's a whole other level of responsibility. And that is, as, as David spoke, uh, spoke of earlier, now you're starting to deal with the budget. You're starting to deal with uh, governance. You're starting to deal with politics. Um, and you have to be the ambassador for all of the children that you serve and all the employees that you lead. Um, and many times, uh, many times, and for example, here in Pennsylvania, we're just coming out of a period where we had two years of a budget impasse. So um, on, on the call, when the governor calls the office, I'm up in, in Harrisburg uh, in the Senate, on the Senate floor presenting and advocating for, for fair funding and equitable funding for our, for our school district. That's a whole different level. Meanwhile, while you're there, the business of the school district is still moving on, moving forward, which you have to uh, stay abreast of all of the things that are happening within the school system. So when, again, back to the evaluation piece, when the, when the public gets to see how all of these pieces connect and all of these responsibilities are, are on the shoulders of the superintendent, they have a greater, a greater appreciation for the work that we do as superintendents. And then um, from a fiscal standpoint, they're able to map map these responsibilities on the amount of hours we spend at doing this work. I mean, the hours are enormous. So, um, you know, it, it, it's a it's a different level of responsibility, and I believe that superintendents are are special and unique individuals because everyone can't do this job. It's not made for everyone. It's made it's made for the best of the best uh, in regards to leadership. Not you know, it's interesting wants. how people, uh, as, as Colleen mentioned, it's, it's interesting how people really don't understand uh, what a superintendent does. Um, you know, it's not, it still happens to me uh, where somebody will, will be at the end of the school year in the conversation, I'm in a meeting somewhere and somebody goes, well, what are you going to do with your summer off? You know, and <laughs> I have to explain that I don't have a summer off, that, you know, the summer for us is probably the busiest time of the year as we hire staff and as we, you know, do those cleanups that you, the, the, the maintenance of the buildings that you do in the summer. But it's just, it's just amazing, you know, that, that even well into the 21st century now, we still have lots of confusion of exactly what superintendents do, even though they do know whenever we make a decision they don't like. You know, they, yeah. they're, they're very aware of that decision. So. Uh, it, it's interesting, and and uh, and I think it's it's also very true that because I have this discussion with people all the time when we move into the central office from a principal's position or whatever, and you know, if they've been up here about six months, I go, "Did you really have any idea what went on in mm -hmm. this building?" And the answer is always no. Right. They never right. had no idea what happened at the central office. You know, I mm -hmm. think that's true across the board, not just in K-12 
districts, but all nonprofit and public organizations. Once you you're actually going into a, almost a new field that you mm -hmm. haven't necessarily been well prepared for, right? I mean, there are things you're doing that you haven't done before, like working with the board. So it's a well, real challenge. Yeah, and you think about what's really important about this job. I'm just looking at my evaluation again, and, and it's something that sparked when Khalid talked about uh, the political part of it. Um, you know, I, maybe his evaluation is different than mine, but, but there's not a part of my evaluation about working with uh, state officials or elected officials. But it's something that I probably spend as much of my time on as anything else. Um, especially this time of year when the legislature is in session, mm -hmm. and uh, not only at the state level but also at the federal level. I mean, you have to be, in my opinion, you have to be involved at all levels. Uh, it's because, unfortunately, it's not just the state that affects what we do, but obviously the federal government has a big effect on what we do also. You've heard two very board-savvy CEOs, superintendents, uh, Khalid, Mameen and David Pennington talking about an extraordinarily important subject, uh, the superintendent's chief executive leadership goals and the process that uh, is followed in these two districts uh, for the board evaluation of the C uh, CEO's or superintendent's performance. I want to thank you, fellows. Uh, this has been great. I appreciate your taking the time, and I wish you a good day.